Welcome back to Out There Living. On this episode of Out There Living, we'll be installing the 500 amp smart shunt from iTech World. And this episode also marks the beginning of our 12 volt series. So we've got the 500 amp smart shunt from iTech World to go in. We've gone with the smart shunt because we are converting to lithium. We've got two of these 100 amp slimline lithium batteries from iTech World. And we've gone with the 200 amps of lithium because we're going to be running this 2000 watt inverter here. And to help charge those batteries, we've got a, a 30 amp solar controller there. We'll do an episode on each one of these iTech products, how we install it, uh, how to use it, and talk a bit about specifications of each one of them in that episode. Then we'll roll into the 12 volt in the canopy, the things like the lighting, um, the accessory plugs and stuff like that that we've installed. Now, before we get too far into it, I wanna talk about the reasons you would use a um, a battery monitor with a smart shunt such as the iTech BM500. Now a battery monitor with a smart shunt is always going to give you the best representation of your battery capacity and your battery health in lead acid, AGM or lithium. However, it's almost the only way to get an accurate representation of your battery capacity um, and what's remaining in a lithium battery. If you were to use a cheap voltmeter or any voltmeter for that reason um, on a lithium battery, you're not going to get an accurate representation of what percentage of battery capacity you have left. This is because in a lithium battery, the volts stay relatively high as the amps drop down. So as you increase that uh, about the 20% point of a lithium battery, you'll still be uh, showing, you know, high 12s or low 13, um, 13 volts. And if, if you're reading that in a voltmeter, you're going to think you've still got plenty of battery capacity left. But in reality, you could be as low as 20%. In an AGM or a, a um, lead acid battery, as the um, amps draw down, the volts draw down um, significantly um, more in comparison. Um, so it's more of a linear scale. With the um, lithium batteries, it, it'll hold a steady line as the volts go across and it'll just drop off um, around the 20% mark. So basically a smart shunt is the best and easiest way to monitor your battery health with a lithium battery. So why did we choose an iTech World BM500 and what sets it apart from other battery monitors? It's got a compact design with a waterproof screen. It's easy to install and easy to use. It is usable with 12, 24, 36 and 48 volt systems and it has a 500 amp current draw. Unlike some other cheaper brands, they will only have a 300 max current draw. And it is good for 1000 amp hour battery bank capacities. So we've opened up the box there. It's got the user guide, the uh, smart shunt, the monitor, the mounting bracket, a uh, power cable, and um, a longer shielded cable there to go from the shunt to the monitor. So we're going to start by uh, putting the monitor there into our switchboard around the other side. And while we're there, we've got the remote switch out of the inverter so we can put that uh, switchboard back in and not have to pull it out for the um, install of the inverter. So we'll get cracking at that. Um, we'll go around the other side and take a look. So there's the cavity there for the batteries. It's so small, it's 130 mil across. And across the face here on these black bits of angle, we'll sit the switchboard, which is on the bench over there. We'll go have a look at. So here's our switchboard. You see up the top there, you've got all your switches. We're not gonna use them all. 
Uh, there, there's some of them are just wired up to blanks at the moment. Down here, you've got USB charge point, a SIG plug, um, an actual SIG lighter there. Um, so we're going to put the uh, shunt up here in the top bit, so it's up out of the way. So to install this, what you're going to need is a 54mm hole saw. Find your spot where you want it, do a pilot hole, and then get your hole saw, drill through, and just test run it. So we'll do that and we'll see how it comes up. There we go, drilled the hole and fits quite nicely so we're just going to undo this wing nut, there's a wing nut on the back here, it's just plastic so don't overdo it when you tighten it, slide that through, pull the cable through, sit that in place, spin it over and Grab this little bracket out of the mounting kit and that goes over there like so and then you screw your wing nut back on. There we go, that's installed. Now it's, a, it's firm but it's not tight, it's enough that it's going to stay there. So we'll have a look at that, come up well. So we're going to go put the switchboard back in place and um, one thing we'll need to do is run this um, shielded extension to the monitor cable there. Um, one thing we might do there is wrap some electrical tape around here just to support them smaller cables a little bit better. Alright, we'll get that in then we'll have a look at it. So there it is. The facade is installed with the monitor in it and it's not connected yet. Nice and tucked away in there, up high up high out of the way. So we'll go around and have a look at the, uh, the, the shunt. So there's the shunt. Um, it's just a plastic sort of bit of angle there with the um, brass uh, shunt itself sitting inside it. Um, you'll see it's got a B side for battery and a P side for that's your, your load output. So um, all your um, negative outputs will come from wherever they're coming from, whether it be a, a bus bar or then appliance itself and into this terminal. Um, you've got your data cable connection, your shielded wire there that plugs into there. And then you'll see here we need to get a little one amp wire into this B plus side there. It's probably pretty hard to see. B plus there um, and then we fix it in place and it'll all be connected so we'll have a look at the, the spot where it's going now so if we come up here you can see it's quite congested in there so we will run the um, we will run the uh, battery cable straight to that B point and then the P point that will go get plugged in to this um, 300 amp bus bar here. It's quite hard to see. There we go. So everything coming into that. And then we'll have a wire coming out into the shunt and then into the battery terminal. So um, then we've got this little red wire here, which is our one amp wire. That's just running out into the fuse box there. Um, and that one amp wire powers the shunt. And then we've got the data cable that we fed through from the facade there that just plugs in. Now we've got the shunt connected. Um, you can see there the ter battery terminal there is connected to the B side and all the um, accessories are running through that um, bus bar into the P side. So we've now installed the shunt. As you can see, it's got the negative running into the B side and the bus bar feed running into the P side. 
a little power cable there, one amp power cable, and then the data cable plugged in there. Um, and we've chose to mount it on that side so that all these, um, the data cable and the power connection there are protected. Um, they're not facing it out. Um, and yeah, so we've got these bus bars here, positive and a negative bus bar. Um, they are a 300 amp, so gonna be good for that inverter. And then they've got this cover on them, which makes them nice and protected, so nothing's gonna fall in there and short out. So now we have the shunt installed, um, the monitor installed, it's all up and running. Um, it's just hiding in behind our panel there. We've ran some wires for the, um, the inverter, which we'll install in the next episode. So it's all tucked in behind there, hidden away. Um, so we'll, we'll head around and talk about the operation of it. So we'll just take a look at the screen. I'll run you through the buttons, it's pretty basic. And then a few things you'll need to do when you start up. So if you look here, that's displaying um, the volts in the batteries. That's the center screen. So you've got a left button, a set, and a right button. If I push the left button, it shows me the volts remaining. If I push the set button, it shows me the amps that are going out. So you see, minus 2.1. If I push the right, it shows me a percentage. Now, now we'll run through how to um, how to set the minimum uh, voltage. So for these lithium batteries, it's 10.5 volts, um, and that's when the monitor will show zero. So you want to go hit your left screen and push your set button and hold for three. One, two, three, um, and then you can use your left and right buttons to go up and down and then just push set again. So now we'll run through how to set the battery bank capacity. So for this, it's gonna be 200 amps because we've got two 100 amp lithium batteries. So we set it at 200. So all you need to do, double click the set button, one, two, and that'll display the amount of amps remaining in the bank. And then you click and hold the set button until it flashes. And then you can tune the um, maximum amps there and then just put push set again and away you go then you're back to your regular screen so once again so you can go left screen will display your volts um, remaining center screen will show your amps out and right screen will show your percentage remaining or you double click the center and it shows you the amps remaining and then it'll just go back so there you go, the iTech World BM500 battery monitor with the 500 amp smart shunt installed. Uh, if you've got any questions, bang them in the comments. If you've enjoyed it, let us know in the comments. Don't forget to head across to Instagram, Facebook and TikTok. Check us out there. Or check out our website, www.outthereliving.com.au. Um, and if you want to get any of this iTech World gear in your car or caravan or whatever it may be, Use the discount code out there living and we'll get you 10% off at the checkout and that's store wide. So um, hang on to that, um, use it whenever you can. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, just remember, whatever it takes, get out there living. All right, hooroo.